Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We've got four full deck guides for you, along with a ton of weekend mission decks and so very much more. We're going to get started pretty quickly, but first, let me tell you about the stream team. If you want gameplay for these decks, you need to check out some of my friends on Twitch, and then the day after, they'll have YouTube videos. We are giving away a season pass tonight on Tucker Stream. The Pirate King himself, Tucker, is giving away a season pass on stream from me. Go check out today's decks there, and then Father Newman tomorrow at <clears throat> 10 a.m. Eastern. I'm a little confused about the time. Newman, I think, said 10 a.m. Eastern is going to be dropping like it's hot. He's going to be dropping the best decks of the week. He's going to try everything out and let you know what he thinks. 10 a.m. Eastern to like, I don't know, 2 p.m. Eastern, something silly like that. So make sure you check out our friend Newman as well. Guess what? Another season pass on that one. So if you're still looking for the season pass, go get some great Marvel Snap content and support some of our friends. Hit that sub. We're doing this every single week. Our first deck is Shuri and Joyer's Blink Tribunal. I don't actually know if this is Shuri and Joyer's deck. I've seen this around a little bit. But Sherry and Joyer is the first person I could find that posted it, so someone let me know in the comments if someone else got this first. Cool. We all good. Like, I'm not claiming Sherry and Joyer made this, although it's possible Sherry and Joyer, a phenomenal player, made this, but Sherry and Joyer is, again, the first person I found that made it. This is obviously a take on the Hella and Joyer um, ongoing tribunal list. However, instead of doing the... Um, Ms. Marvel stuff as your backup plan. What you're really doing here is you're running like a little blink package to get that onslaught Iron Man, um, onslaught Iron Man Tribunal more consistently, while also stopping your opponent's ability to interact with it by using Leech. Jubilee gives you a little bit extra consistency along with Magic, while Leech says, "Huh, you would like to stop me by getting rid of my Limbo. You would like to stop me by um, using Red Guardian or Enchantress on my combo." Well, Iron Man. Uh, sorry, Leech gets rid of the on-goings that would stop, sorry, the on-reveals, I know how to speak once in a blue moon, friends, the on-reveals that would ruin your day. And for Mirror Match's other combos that are a problem, you have Super Scroll. This deck has a really high win rate thus far, a really high cube rate, it's been working extremely well, and people straight up do not know what the hell you're doing until you've dropped a million power in each lane and won the game. Alright, so you can find... Uh, Shuri Enjoyer at twitter.com slash Shuri Enjoyer. Tribunal, Blink, and Ravona aren't optional. They're 100% needed, which means this, this is a reasonably expensive deck for the time being. If you bought Blink, though, um, Tribunal is currently in Spotlights and will be Series 4 as of June, and Ravona is already Series 4 and is in Spotlights in a couple weeks. So, friends, if you have 6,000 tokens and bought Blink and you want and you don't have Tribunal or Ravona, if you just wait a few weeks, you can have them both and build this awesome deck. Cool. We are going to do a lot with the new cards there. I promise you at the very end of this video is a really, really cool deck that um, doesn't run Blink or Sage. We're focusing mostly on Blink and Sage today, just so you know. All right, so our turn by turn. So um, turn one is passed. Turn two, you want Ravona over Psylocke. Turn three, Magic over, um, or Jubilee or a two. If you have Magic, I tend to just play Magic. Jubilee, if you have Ravona, is pretty damn good. It gets you your combo piece early, lets you know what lane you're worried about. Turn four is Jubilee or Leech. If you're still looking for combo pieces, and especially if you don't have Magic, I like Jubilee. If not, get that Leech out for Blink. Um, those are generally better than Scrawl. And once in a while, if you had Ravona, you're happy to Iron Man if you already have a bunch of your combo pieces in order. Turn five, um, Iron Man or Blink, usually, once in a while, Sarah. Um... Sarah is generally speaking for me, if I wanna if I'm trying to win on six, I can sometimes win games just by going Iron Man Mystique, because there's a lot of power in that play. Especially if Jubilee hits something really good earlier. The other thing that I um like to use Sarah for is if it's a seven turn game, I can Mystique Sarah and give everything negative two, and then if with Ravona something's negative three, and just sort of power off last turn. Onslaught and Tribunal are obviously the regular plays on turn 6. Turn 7, Onslaught Tribunal, or if you did the Sarah thing, you can just sort of drop your whole hand. It's a really, really cool deck, and I strongly urge you to give it a try. I decided to uh, not go with the hips as my variant today. I think that it is not hip leech time, it is pixel leech time if you have pixel leech, because leech is the scourge of the meta. It is the most hated card. Um, I actually, I'm just going to pitch this now while we're here. I think my leech fix of choice would be leech only affects cards that cost more than he does. I would be fine if it was um, greater than or equal to, 
right? But I think Leech should only affect five and six cost cards and maybe four cost cards. I think that would fundamentally balance the card even with this stat line. But mostly what I want to do is show off my cool Spotlight Tribunal. I used three caches. I got one of the best leeches in the game. I got the best Tribunal in the game. And of course, I got Sage. Please hit that sub, like, and comment. We bring you at least three brand new decks every single weekday. Several times a week, we bring you upwards of 10 to 15 new decks when we do new cards, when there's a new patch and weekend mission days. We uh, bring you consistent constant marvel snap content we do shorts for every single bundle we we cover everything in this game if you would like more information on marvel snap this is the channel for you we do consistent deck guides make sure you hit that sub button if you've already subbed like comment watch as long as you can all three of those really help us and help the channel grow and we greatly appreciate you let's get to the next deck oh let's not get to the next deck this is our sage friday guide okay Sage is a ton of power. Literally 20 seconds before I pressed record, I was watching Zal on the stream team, and I watched him think he lost a game with a bounce deck, the bounce deck that we covered in yesterday's video, in fact, and Sage was 12 power, just a casual 12 power, on, uh, and that won the game. It topped a play of death and something else in the lane. Sage can be huge. This is the wrong meta for Sage to be incredible. This is, for the first time in quite a while, the leech meta. And the leech meta says, since you want to play Sage at the end of the game, you're in a little bit of trouble, right? Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. The leech meta is bad for Sage. If leech gets reverted, if something else happens to leech, I don't know what Sage is going to be. So Sage is very complicated to recommend. I don't think this is a card you want right now. And it's possible they leave the leech meta in place for months. Is it likely? Who the hell knows? Second Denner's got their own internal stats that we don't have access to. They're not answering anything about Leech this quickly. So is Leech um, going to stick around? If so, Sage isn't going to be better for a long time. But if Leech is gone, we don't know what this card is. I do know that I'm playing it in various shells where it's often, where it's on average, it seems like 10 power. And it's hitting 12, 14, 16 um, with like extra tricks, so on to get there reasonably often that's a lot of power for a three drop also we should be running wolf spain more but that's a conversation for another day but that's a lot 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 of power for a three drop that you're not really doing a lot of work for it feels like hit monkey with less work i worry that by not recommending this this can be cannonball 2.0 this can be um us agent 2.0 where it's not great now but it, in a little bit it becomes absolutely incredible but huge caveat um, I can't recommend it right now. I can't recommend it for a future that I'm not sure is coming anytime soon. I want to. I really enjoy this card. But I'm not going to. Because as much as I would like to, I don't know that it can be worth it. I'm not second dinner, and I can only recommend based on where we are. This card will have its day in the sun. Keep an eye on it. If you have enough resources to get it, I strongly urge you to get it so that you are part of that. But if your resources are extremely limited, I think it's better to get things that you know will be good. Hopefully that makes sense to all of you. Now, onto this deck. We've we've talked about a deck very similar to this. Our friend Sizer made this deck. Um, the FAK is founded. FAK is a team in Eastern Europe, I believe largely um, Russian Federation, but like all over the place in Eastern Europe. FAK Crazy is the most famous member. FAK Molwin finished in the top five last season. Uh, there's another FAK somewhere around the top, but... One of the FAKs won a fairly major European tournament with a cash prize. Not a huge cash prize, but with a cash prize for, with this deck. I don't know what exactly the cash prize was. It was not, um, right? I, I don't know how accurate the money reporting was across languages and cultures. However, um, a friend of ours sent this to us, and this deck has been dominating. What it does is it fundamentally answers everything in the meta. There's nothing in the meta that goes super tall that gets taller than this, right? Um... If you are stuck trying to deal with um, Iron Man nonsense, you have Enchantress. If you're stuck trying to, or Patriot nonsense. If you're stuck trying to deal with Ultron, you've got Killmonger. Uh, Mobius handles your death destroy nonsense. It handles your Loki matchup. Like, Loki is an actual snap. A lot of things that want to destroy things need those late on reveals that Leech will handle. You have a meta answer for everything with this deck. I am so freaking high on this list. This list and the one from yesterday's video, the one KM uh, pushed, the, that one has worse matchups. This one has a better matchup thread, but a le but a lower win rate, like, overall, because it's trying to spread to cover a lot of different things, right? 
but this deck is sick. It handles everything. All right, so I want to thank our friend uh, Dai Cavallo, an Italian player who plays all the top Italians in the meta, for sending me this, making me aware of just how powerful it's been, and that the top players in the game are sort of circling around this deck like sharks, as what this as this could be the big meta answer. All right, so um, Red Hulk can be Magneto for this. Nocturne could be Red Guardian, Scarlet Witch, Storm, or Cosmo. Mobius, um, you need, but like without Mobius, you just straight up die to Loki. So like, please have Mobius. Uh, my rule of thumb is I want to play Mobius, generally speaking, in the same lane as, lane as Domino, so that if they want to try and Red Guardian my Mobius, they might hit my Domino. That's your best bet to making sure it happens, because there's nothing with less power than Mobius that you're probably playing in that lane. Um, you need Blink for this list. Cool. All right. This is a turn you win, or with an answer for almost everything. Turn one, you pass, because you don't run ones. Turn two, Domino. Turn three, you pick whatever three based on circumstance. And again, um, be careful with Nocturne, because if they magic, you want to not let them magic in that Nocturne lane. Um, Mobius is relatively safe, and Killmonger is relatively safe. So I think Mobius is the priority, unless you think your opponent is playing magic. Um, if your opponent's, I guess your opponent's playing, not playing magic, Nocturne is a priority. If your opponent is playing magic, um, Mobius is the priority, and Killmonger is just a nice way to sort of like catch up from the early turns when you fall behind. Turn four is Leech or Jubilee, based on the meta. Turn five is Blink over Claw over uh, Vision. I like Claw better than Vision as a rule. Make sure that you're leeching or Jubileeing in the um, mid or left lane. The sheer number of times, it happened to me when I first started playing the deck too, and I learned pretty quickly, but it's happened against me a few times since everyone posted the decks, um, where you leech or Jubilee in the right lane, and then up comes Claw, and you just gave up, gave away eight power. And then turn six, you Doom or Red Hulk. And then you win, because this deck is crazy strong. Doom has really good coverage in this list. I'm still, I think, personally higher in Magneto overall. But for this version, I kind of like Doom, because this version is, again, trying to cover a spread. It's different than yesterday's in that it's trying to cover a spread. This is still fundamentally Sizer's deck, um, with just Killmonger added. But I think it is worth covering again. And look, we're doing uh, four full deck guides today, and I really, really, really want to emphasize this list as a thing that top players are circling around, and we're still getting to weekend mission decks, because we have three more Blink decks, including that last one, um, and reminder that Blink should be in weekend missions, and Blink is basically a must-own card, so if you can afford to buy Blink, you should probably buy that card. That card is really, really good. Um, we also have... So uh, three more Sage decks, including a full guide and one deck that features both. The first deck we're going to talk about is a Hella deck. Um, this, I mean, look, in 100 and whatever math decks, uh, 112 games, 71% win rate for Nerf Herder with this Black Knight um, Blink deck. That's wildly good. I think the play line here is completely, like, hilarious. You get Black Knight outright, you discard your Magneto, Gigantor, or Infinite, um... Then if you Ghost Rider that back, you can Blink, get another one of your big cards, right? Now you have this one stupid lane, and you still have the Shard to play. You can also do the Hope um, Pass play, which is where you go Hope, and then you play whatever the hell on four. Um, I don't know. Let's say um, your play is Sunspot on Hope on turn four. Your Sunspot grows, you pass turn five, and then on turn six, you can go She-Hulk and Infinite, which is just... Silly, silly power. This deck is super cool, and you should really try it out. Um, it's not, yeah, it's a great Black Knight list. This is, I think, the best Black Knight list around right now. All right, Kellanitas, a um, Spanish player, has this really cool Blink Galactus. Um, I don't love Blink Galactus, but I like Blink Galactus fine. So fundamentally, what you're trying to do here is you can, um, I mean, what you could really do here is you can Electro Blink, which is just an absolutely hilarious play. Excuse me. If you Electro Professor X, you can also then War Machine to get into that Professor X lane, which is, again, completely hilarious. You can um, play Ravona, and then on turn five, you can go Professor X and Martyr. This is an expensive deck, but it is a very cool deck that has about 10 million different plays that can win you the game a snap. Cannonball and Lyth fundamentally do the same thing here. Um, Cannonball is better if you Galactus. Lyth is fairly often better if you don't. Get that um, Professor X or Galactus off where it'll win you the game. Everything here like has at least one or two combos. Very, very cool deck, so props to Kellanitas. Um, Yeah, give this one a try. Next up, we are on to Sage. This is our friend Phil Woodward's Ravona Renslayer Sage. So this deck, fundamentally, um, 
has it wants to combo off with Sage and Will Spin. So what I'd really like to do is get Mystique and Wong in two different lanes. And if you have Ravona out, you can do this on turn five and six. You can go Wong into Mystique, and then in one lane you go Will Spin, one lane you go Sage, and then you win. Ideally, you have like an Angela in one of these lanes or whatever other nonsense. Um, if you're going for this play on turn four, you can also throw Ironheart into the mix, which is completely silly. And of course, you can always copy Mystique and Iron Man. This is like a Mr. Negative deck that's not running Mr. Negative. I think it's really cool, so props to Phil. Um, it's possible this one gets a full guide down the line. I didn't have a chance to play it yet because I've had a busy day, but this is one I fully plan to explore further. Whenever Phil shares a deck, it basically always works. He's super consistent. Next up, we have Mill Sage. This is Den's idea. Den thinks Sage has worked best with Absorbing Man, and Absorb Man's best shells are Mill. So Den combined the two. Um, okay, Den doesn't think Sage works well with Absorb Man. Den has access to Snap Zone stats. Sage has worked really, really well with Absorbing Man so far. It gets really big. So given that that's the case, um, putting it in the Mill package where you already want the Absorbing Man, largely to copy Zemo, but um, also now to copy Sage, is really good. You can also copy that Shang or Enchantress, especially going into turn seven, where if you have six turns, you can spend a turn going Enchantress, and then they think they're safe, and then you just go sort of Enchantress for Shang again, which is just wildly good. You, you get rid of their cards. This is a very cool shell. I'm excited to try this one as well. My son is talking, and I don't know why. All right, um, Gatos Gone Wild, who's Gatos on uh, Twitch, awesome person, finished at the top of Swiss in our most recent Snap Grand Prix, our most recent tournament. Um, this is just crazy sauce. I watched him play it on stream for a while the other day where like you're doing like Sage pops out of Lockjaw. You're just perfectly happy. You usually got a card or two there. It's great. If you don't want it to stick there, Grandmaster can make it not stick there. You can end up Grandmastering hammers or um, Thors over to different locations. You can just do hammer Odin nonsense to end the game and ignore Lockjaw. You have um, you can throw that white tiger into Lockjaw. Um, if you go Ravona White Tiger, you can still blink that White Tiger. You can um, blink off your Sage for to then potentially come back because of Lockjaw. Just 10 million plays of ridiculous coolness. If you bought Grandmaster and have been regretting it, I strongly urge you to play this deck. This is really cool. This is our deck that features both Sage and Blink. I think it's cool. I also really like the idea that you can play Sage on 3 or 4, blink it away, and then if you draw it back... Awesome. Why? What's the problem, right? Like, you can just re-get that Sage and make yourself basically Thor's power. All right, this is our feature. This is uh, Black Dama. You can check this out on Twitter. He's posting a huge guide in conjunction with the release of this video, which we're always excited to do with our friend. Now, this is the premiere, currently, negative Sage deck. This Looks sort of like Phil Woodard's deck, right? Except now we're running the negative package because why would we not be running the negative package? We have a lockdown package as well to say like, hey, you cut that out. Um, I can just, if I can win a one with a 1-5 Professor X, right? I can also sage off um, with like an Iron Man to end the game, which is just stupid power, right? If sage is 10 and I can play sage with a 5 power Iron Man, I fundamentally dropped like 30 power in that. All right, twitter.com slash blackdama is how you find this wonderful human being. Ravon is required and Sage is required. But hey, look at the rest of this deck. What you see is a bunch of lower series cards. So if you have series four Ravona and you get Sage, you have a deck. Uh, Morph is just a thing of beauty here. So turn one, you pass because duh. Turn two, Ravon is better than Psylocke. Turn three, you would like to negative. If not, Morph is perfectly fine. Turn four, negative is the goal. But again, you can Wong if you would like to. Or you can drop Iron Man if you got that Ravon out. Turn five, Jane, if you played negative, get your zeros. Um, or you can Mystique that Wong or Iron Man. Don't hesitate to Mystique in a different lane. Or you can drop a 1-5 Professor X, or just a 5-0 Professor X, depending on what else has happened. Then turn six, you want to combo off Sage and Iron Man. Iron Man and Mystique often win the game. One last look at this. This deck is super duper cool and really, really, really worth playing. Um, I think that you'll love it. I had a chance to play this for a couple games and just... My heart is with this. I think this is really strong. Um, I'm going to say straight up, I'm going to end up wanting Zola in this with time. I'm not sure if I want to keep Morph or I want to add Zola because um, you know how you can do that um, Wong Panther thing? I mean, Wong Sage um, Zola works freaking just as well. Like, it works just as well. It doesn't get as huge all the time, but it still wins pretty damn often. It's very, very cool. 
Sage is very strong. Um, if you Sage Wong, you're just you're so much bigger than your original Panther that you're usually okay. And then if your opponent's going at all wide, you just go over the top. You should play this list. Um, if you want to try out another card, try out Zola. I think Zola again might be better than that morph. Oh. Hey, we got some quick updates before we get to the last deck of the day, our cheapest deck of the day, just for the record. Um, we have, if you want to check out Marvel Snap Zone, I wrote this week both a spotlight cash guide and a series drop guide. So it's a guide of every spotlight cash we have that is known to be coming and data mined, a ranking of them, along with discussions about why each ranking. It doesn't matter if you agree with the ranking, it gives you logic for why you would want the cards in them, and then hopefully you can make your own ranking based on what you have. We also have a full series drop guide, which is a deck and an explanation and ranking of every card that is dropping series on June 4th from 5 to 4 or 4 to 3. And if you're interested, every um, usually Sunday, sometimes Monday, we write an article that um, talks about all the best decks in Marvel Snap. So if you're interested in that stuff, check it out. But also tomorrow, right here on this YouTube channel, we will have, well, and on every podcatcher, we will have a very special episode of Snap Judgment Podcast. It is episode 50 since we've joined Marvel Snap Zone, episode 77 overall. So we've officially like almost doubled the times we are on Snap Zone. But 50 is a nice round number, so we're doing something special. We've got the best player of all time, Lambi Series, joined by the best deck builder of all time, W, and we're going to rank the top five cards at each cost slot. Get excited. Also, we're probably going to do a special Patreon Q&A with Lambi, so make sure you're on at least the $5 tier if you're interested in that. All right, our final deck of the day is Roby Surfer. This is Lil Robitussin's Silver Surfer list. Um, this is relatively cheap. The only high series card you really, really well, I guess you want Kitty. Elsa and Shaw, Nocturne is just extra and nice because Nocturne works really well with Angela oh, and Elsa. And there's just a ton of power to this. This list is very cool. This is from our friend Lil Robotus. You can find it on twitch.tv slash Lil Robotus and one. Kitty and Elsa are needed. Nocturne can be Spidey. Shang can be Enchantress, depending on what you're seeing in the meta. But Shaw is probably needed. You might be able to try out Gladiator or if you can find like... If you can figure out another big three, like Sage would actually fit really well here. So pre-infinite, um, Roby's doing great with this in infinite. But what brought this to my attention was Team Counter Guy has it like an 85% win rate pre-infinite. Took a season off, came back, played, and is just sort of dominating with real players with this deck. Because real players don't know what the hell you're doing. Because this is not a deck that anyone has seen or is playing. So they can't counter you. They don't understand what you're doing. Meanwhile, because no one's playing like Kitty and Ang the Kitty Angela package with Surfer, right? So they don't know what you're doing, and then bots know what you're doing because bots straight up. If you don't know, if you're not aware, bots don't understand Sarah, and they often lose to the card. All right, so turn one is Kitty, turn two is Angela or Forge. I tend to prioritize Angela. If Angela, you'd really like to drop Elsa, but you're also pretty okay dropping Nocturne. If Forge, you want to drop Rude or Shaw. Turn four, you drop another three along with Kitty again, hopefully on Angela. Turn five, you'd like to Sarah, unless they played Mobius. If not, you are happy to go Forge and Brood or Shaw. Then turn six, you combo off with Surfer last. You can either play three threes. For example, with the play lines we've talked about, you can go um, Luke and Shaw with Surfer, right? Or um, if things went well and you got Sarah, you can go Shang-Chi, Silver Surfer, and Kitty Pride and just be like, boom, I win. Also worth remembering that Sebastian Shaw will get that extra bonus from the um, Elsa Bloodstone buff. You're only going to get that bonus once, but Shaw only really needs one extra bonus to be the biggest three around outside of, obviously, our new card Sage. This list is, again, very cool, and I urge you to give it a try. Anytime Ghost is in a deck. If you want to be on the channel, I'm a sucker for a good Ghost deck. All right, we are... Oh, I didn't have questions of the day. I meant to make questions of the day, and then time got late, and we're recording the podcast in a few minutes. So I love you. I appreciate you. We will do questions of the day on Sunday's video. Really sorry. Appreciate you. We're going to say, if you're interested in the Patreon, check out patreon.com slash snapjudgments, where we have all sorts of exclusive content. We looked at all the decks I've played this season earlier this week. Um, every week, we rank the top 10 decks we've played, and so very much more. We also thank all of our $10 patrons on the, um, yeah, right here. But worth knowing, uh, the question of the day that I got to was someone asked, I don't remember who, was if you had like, the question was if you had like 300 $10 patrons, would you try and list all uh, 300? <laughs> yup. Uh, 300 
$10 patrons would literally change my life. You better believe I'm going to take the time to thank people. Everyone doesn't have to listen to my ending, right? But I would take the time to thank people. Faux show. So thank you to Abigail Geeslin, long-term, long-term patron. Our friend, Mandatory Burnout. Cables, who's almost home. Cables, you need to tell me what's happening with your life, my friend. David G. Wingfield. Hi, David. Direwolf. Direwolf is awesome. Hopefully, uh, Direwolf is on the way to Infinite. Haven't heard from Direwolf in a bit, but hey. LAB, always kind. Fa Thor Newman, check him out for as a member of the stream team this Saturday morning, but also check out his YouTube because every day. The Good Dog Gamer, phenomenal player. Make does really great builds of decks. Good night, Noah. Sorry, my son's going to bed. J Nev Inc. Sorry, Inc. Long term sub. This is the way, all the way from Scotland. J Never Eat. How's your infinite climb going, my friend? JD McDonaldino, Twitch streamer, wonderful player. Lambie Troll. Keratix Lee, the king of questions. Koi Ray, all the way from Japan. Herofros and his wonderful, uh, literal, consistent support, but also wonderful miniatures. The Goat Seeker, won a pod in Snap Judgments League Season 1. Denman Falcon, check him out on YouTube. Doku, welcome aboard to Ginger Prime. Philip Rakovich, easy top thousand player, one of our mods, great player. Haplo, Kenny Loggins of the Danger Zone. One of the OGs, Rob Silverman. The Bizza, not the Jizza, the Bizza. x V and Skippy G, our rhyming friend. Snap Judgments League 1 season champion, Tommy Nyquist. Our king of bros. Bro. Black Dahlia. The Great Kazoo. Jessica Campbell, my son is yelling and now I'm distracted, I'm sorry. Ryan Wood. Kev Sihora. Early collection level, kicking ass. Luna Chris. Mod Supreme. Uh, Mod Supreme Models. My former student, Lou Antunes, I'm telling you, my son is yelling in another room and it's really disrupting me. Rime Setala, Brian Kaufman, Tristan H. Martin, the Fuzzy Dunlop of The Wire fame, Spectrumix, Woo. Matt H., DJ Mikey Hijinks, our friend Oflex, Ocularis, Craig Sterry, how you doing, Craig? Pretty frickin' chill. Seamus, always cool to see you. Spike Jones, Jonesy, over on YouTube. Two Ties, who gave me the deck I got to Infinite with this season and is one of our wonderful mods. The Pirate King Tucker, congrats, King, on being a Twitch partner. So happy for and proud of you. Go check out Tucker to freaking night for this celebration, giving away that season pass. If I can figure out how to get free tonight from family obligations, I will be there too, and we're going to pop off in celebration. The Homie Min. Miss you, my friend. And of course, Gunny T, where the T stands for tomorrow. W and Lambie on the podcast. See you tomorrow. Have a great night. Peace.